Well, hello everybody, and welcome to Jeff's Baking Blog. Today I'm going to make some uh, soft mini focaccias. It's a recipe I saw several years ago on giallozafferano.com and promised myself that I would make them, but I never got round to it. So I thought I would do them now. And it's not a particularly difficult recipe, um, particularly if you have a stand mixer, but it does take some time because um, we make the dough and leave it to proof for a, uh, a while, three hours in fact, and then we put it in the fridge and leave it for a further 10 or so hours before we do anything else with it. Um, but that allows the, the full flavour um, to develop for the focaccia because we don't use um, too much yeast. So, as I said, it's not particularly difficult, but it takes that time. So I'll go on to the ingredients for the recipe. And for this, I have uh, 400 grams, which is two and two thirds cups, based on scooping packed flour into a 250 milliliter cup of zero zero flour. Uh, that's an Italian flour or Italian style flour, which has a high protein level of about 13%, but you could use very strong bread flour or just strong white bread flour, um, which is about 11% protein in the UK, and that would work uh, quite well as well. And then to go with that, I have um, 95 millilitres, a third of a cup plus one uh, tablespoon of olive oil. I have 130 millilitres, half a cup plus two teaspoons of water, 120 millilitres, half a cup of milk, three grams, one teaspoon of instant yeast, uh, six grams, one teaspoon of salt, 12 grams, one tablespoon of sugar. And that's everything we need uh, for the dough. And then, uh, in addition, I have an, a further uh, 40 millilitres, two tablespoons plus two teaspoons of olive oil, which I will use for um, greasing a baking tray and drizzling over the top of the uh, dough before it's baked. And then I just have uh, a tablespoon or so of sea salt flakes, which I will sprinkle over the top as well. But I, we don't need uh, the sea salt flakes or that extra virgin olive oil um, until tomorrow basically so these are the, the ingredients we'll use for the dough and we'll go on and make that dough now and to make the dough I'm going to put the milk and the water and the sugar and the yeast and the oil into the bowl of my stand mixer and I'm just going to give those a little mix around And that's good enough. And then I'm going to put in about half of the flour. And I'll give that a mix. And that's good enough like that. And so then I'm going to sprinkle my salt over and I'm going to add in the remaining flour. And I'm going to knead that until it forms a shaggy dough, which will only take a, a few seconds basically. Mm -hmm. 
So that's quickly formed a shaggy dough and I'm going to con continue to knead that now until that uh, dough becomes very very stretchy um, and uh, elastic. It will still be tacky but it will be stretchy and elastic and that's going to take me 12 to 15 minutes probably. So I've kneaded my dough for 12 minutes and I can see that it's very, very stretchy. So I'm going to take that out and put it into a, a lightly greased bowl. And I'll just put that onto the counter for the moment, um, just so that I can um, form that into a nice tight bowl. like that and I'm going to put that face down into a bowl just and the bowl is uh, greased with olive oil and I'll just turn that over like that and then I'm going to cover that with some plastic wrap I'm going to leave that for three hours and I'll come back and show it to you in three hours and then I will put it into the fridge and leave it for at least 10 hours so that would be overnight basically um, and then uh, tomorrow we'll be ready uh, to use that dough for making our mini soft focaccias. Well it's been three hours now and my dough um, has risen quite nicely in the bowl but I'm now going to put that into the fridge and I'm going to leave it there until tomorrow morning. <coughs> so I'll actually leave mine for longer than 10 hours simply because um, I won't be ready to bake it at that time but I'll come back um, after at least 10 hours and then what I'm going to do is to uh, divide that into eight pieces and then shape it, proof it again before we bake it. So I'll be back in the morning when I'm ready to proceed on with the baking. It's now the, the next day and my dough has been resting. It's actually been in the fridge for 12 and a half hours but that's fine. But I've taken it out of the fridge now um, and it's been out of the fridge for 10 minutes or so. So uh, I'm going to go on to the next step, which is to divide it into eight pieces. But just before I do that, I'm going to take some of my oil, olive oil, and brush it onto the bottom of a baking tray. Just like that and put that to one side and then I'm going to tip my dough out and here it is uh, risen up quite nicely I'm going to divide that into eight equal pieces. So I'll actually just weigh the dough as it is. And it's 738 grams so uh, 90 grams would be 720 so 72 grams for, uh, sorry 92 grams for each piece will be fine
So I have my eight pieces and I'm going to form each of them into a tight ball. And then I'm going to leave them to rest for five minutes. So I've let those rest for five minutes and I have a little bit of flour in a bowl here and I'm going to take each ball of dough and put it into some flour and then I'm just going to press that out to flatten it like that and I'm going to put that onto the baking tray and I've decided I'm going to use two baking trays for mine So I've pressed those out, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of my remaining oil and I'm going to drizzle it onto each of the pieces of dough. And then I'm going to leave the dough for an hour. So that's them drizzled with oil so I'll leave those for an hour and as that hour comes to an end I'm going to preheat my oven to 220 degrees celsius 200, uh, 200 celsius with a fan 430 fahrenheit um, and then uh, as the hour ends and the oven is preheated I'll come back and we'll finish off the work with the dough and put them in the oven and bake them my oven is preheated now and it's been an hour so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my fingers and I'm going to press them into the dough like that and then I'm going to take my uh, sea salt and I'm just going to sprinkle some over the top and some of that's going to fall off once they're baked but it doesn't matter now I guess you could sprinkle over other things, poppy seeds or whatever if you wanted to. I'm going to put those into the oven and I'm going to bake them for 12 to 13 minutes um, until uh, the tops have gone a nice golden brown colour and they're baked all the way through. Then I'll take them out of the oven and put them onto a wire rack. And once they've cooled down, I'll come back and show you what they look like and I'll have a taste. I baked my soft mini focaccia for uh, 13 minutes and they uh, browned or went to nice golden brown colour on the top. Now mine did rise slightly more than the original recipe that I saw, but I actually think that's because I used a fan assisted oven rather than um, just the static oven so the heat was um, sort of being blown over the top of the, um, the, the focaccia all the time but it, it doesn't matter they're 
perfectly um, shaped as they are. So I'll show you what they look like. And as I said, uh, they have rounded slightly on the top, but that's fine. They're lovely and soft, I have to say. And I've cut one open so that you can see inside. And I've, I've put some uh, butter or some buttery spread, should I say, uh, on one of them, which I'll have a taste of now. Mm. That is very, very good indeed. Perfect for my uh, lunch today. And uh, the rest I will, will share some with my niece, but the others I will freeze as well um, so that I can have them later in the week. So this is actually quite an easy recipe. It's very, very... Uh, tasty I have to say but um, it does take quite a while because you um, make the dough then you leave it overnight but the amount of actual effort involved in doing it isn't that uh, much at all so I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have please give me the thumbs up below and click to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already in the top right hand corner of the screen there'll be an eye that you can click on and that will take you to a link for the recipe and I'll put a link below the video as well and I'll be back with another recipe in the very near future so until then happy baking.